Saturday, November 10th, early morning at Les Sables d'Olonne. A rainy morning, overcast. The type not to be caught outdoors, but they're all there. Some came from next door, others from far away. There are 300,000. And they came because the most extraordinary sailing competition parade is held here along the channel, and that every four years. The most extraordinary parade, full of emotion. We could use all kinds of words, invent more, but finally, none will translate what one feels right at that moment, at this particular place. There are no words that express that. I don't think you could ever get used to that. It's impossible. To wake up this morning and see so many people here, you know, I'm just, I feel humble that so many people come to, to, to wish us good luck. It's, uh, it's good emotions. Even the hardest rock, the old veterans have tremor in their voice. So imagine a novice, the fleet's youngest. We're off for a relatively long time, far from our relatives. There's much emotion, my mom's crying. At some point, you have to cast off. So the parade begins. What's in these skippers' minds as they pass through this gigantic guard of honor? That they carry the dreams for adventure of all who stay on land? Are they serene, proud, overwhelmed by the huge challenge upon themselves? It's the same feeling as four years ago. We're off to the unknown. Or are they simply focused on the maneuvers that will take them out at sea to the start line? I'm ready to go, determined, concentrated, tense but serene, happy to get going. We don't know precisely what goes on under these skulls. Once past the channel, the race already begins. On the start line, teammates need to disembark, find the right position to have the best start off at 1.02 p.m. precisely. So when François Cluzet pulls the trigger, he somehow sets free a great amount of impatience. Five competitors among the best steal the start. Yes, steal it. They're off for three months and steal the start as if in a three-bore regatta. Except for Gutkowski, the Pole, they're all experienced skippers. François Gabard, Quito de Pavon, Armel Lecléache, and Vincent Rioux. All favorites obliged to maneuver to pass the start line again. The others are off. If well considered, something's not right. Count on your fingers, normally 20, and there are only 19 who set off. One's missing, Bertrand de Broc, who pulls in after damaging his boat 25 minutes before the start. Oh, there's nothing to worry. We lose maybe 24 hours. There's even an opponent who sent a text message, Marquis Mo, saying, one day out of 90 isn't much. <laughs> Marquis Mo, who's in the lead of the race's first afternoon. Nice to think a skipper right in the middle of action would take the time to comfort an opponent. What he can't foresee is that he's going to be the one who will need comfort and soon. The first evening, 3 a.m., Marc Guimot is back at the Sable de Lonne Harbor. He has sailed in all four hours and 43 minutes. When he heard a double noise, a double shock, the boat begins to heel and loses suddenly five knots. Marc Guimot lost his keel. There's no doubt on the issue. It's true, I made it a priority this year. So I'm very disappointed. Very sad. That's it. A few encouraging applause punctuated an announcement at this first abandon. Two hours before, others had brightened the night for Bertrand de Broc, who finally took his start. I hope this time's the good one. Of course it's the good one, as Bertrand de Broc sets off 240 miles behind a leader. 
a leader who, when he casts off, is among the fleet's youngest, François Gavard. You're on direct from Massif. Mm, see how it's wet? I just wanted to show you something. We're sailing downwind, going rather fast. Always in the lead. We're not far from PRB and Banque Populaire. It's a treat. François Gabal went for it in the evening. It may have been a good idea, but the sea was rough. And I had promised myself to be wise. I held my word and hope I won't regret it in the next days. Attack, slow down, temper, wait. Each do as they feel, as they can. It's clear that from now on, everyone's in the Vendée Globe. There are smiles, frowns, and anecdotes. Hi, it's Samantha Davis aboard Saveol, off the Portugal coasts. And for the moment, all is well. Waves are really bad. You'd normally be following a spinnaker, but it was quite difficult. Had the spinnaker up a couple of times in the night. These are my mother's canle. There's one bag left. Thank you, Mom. When I get to Ecuador, there won't be any left. On board Sinerciel. Here are Philippe Lowe's credit cards he forgot as he left the boat. <laughs> Is this one here? He'll just get them when I arrive. But there are less funny stories. It looked like a great day, and suddenly, bang! A trawler without his IAS activated. I was sleeping in maybe 10 minutes. I collided this trawler. It's a miracle the mast is still in place. I have no shroud left. I made up a jury rig, hoping it'll hold. And I have no bowsprit left, and damages on the boat in front. The Vendée Globe 2012 is at an end for me. For Groupe Bell and all the people that worked with me. It's a silly accident. So dumb. I'm really sorry. We're the ones to be sorry. As one could think the curse is still on. That he'll never go very far from Les Sables d'Olonne. Four years ago, after 28 hours race, Quito dismasted. And now, after barely three days, this collision with a trawler that hadn't activated its AIS. Months, years of hard work, all down to nothing on a stroke of bad luck. And in the Cascais Marina in Portugal, images show the extent of the damage, way more than what had been shown on board. Voilà, voilà. Not a nice sight. I found ways. It's surprising how one finds solutions to everything when panic is on board. I brought the boat back. Obviously, I can't sail the world around with a boat in this state. So there's no more Vendée Globe. I don't know if it's me who doesn't want the Vendée Globe or if it's the Vendée Globe who doesn't want me. But in any case, it's for the others. The others are now 18, led by François Gabard, who's got two on his heels at about 50 miles. Armel Lecléache and Bernard Stamm, and another, Vincent Rioux, a little more west. 
Because imagine there's a passage at front, the first strategical decisions, and to better understand the play, let's have a word with Maître Vincent. So I'm going to present you my inside, my table for the maps. We have a little delay of about 100 miles on Massif, who's ahead. Now, nothing's really played yet. And why so? Because between Massif and PRB, there's 120 miles lateral. Lateral or not, none will soften. It's rough, wet, and shaky. Never mind, no one lets go. They don't hold back, neither men nor boats. But it's behind that it breaks down. Another problem. Technical problems on Louis Burton's boat. I hope it won't cause another abandon. Unfortunately, it is one. After Quito de Pavon, Louis Burton, the fleet's youngest, collides with a trawler. As if a law of series had fallen over the race, damaged shrouds, he sets his way back to Les Sables d'Olonne, then abdicates. In the following night, Thursday to Friday, the list extends. The spruce and always positive Samantha Davis dismasts. We're about 60 miles apart, heavy, rough conditions. I hope all will be okay for you to get back. Sam, I'm really disappointed and sad for you. I lose a partner in the game, and the race loses a beautiful compare. Have a safe way home. Big kiss. The only woman on the Vendée Globe, and she abandons. After a week navigation, there are only 16 skippers left. In other words, 20% of the fleet has already disappeared in only seven days. And there's another lesson to get out of this first week. It's going to be tight. If you look that way towards the horizon, I'm sure you won't see anything. But believe me, I don't lie. Pujula is about 45 miles next to us. Those are the news. This last day has been rather rough. Twisted wind. I don't think my comrades have had such disturbed winds for two days. I don't know what I did wrong. I hope my punishment is at its end. His punishment? François Gabard gave up his leadership to Armel Lecliage. And along with Bernard Stamm, they are within 25 miles. Best, the first six are within 100 miles. The race is at its full, and next step will be the same for all. We're trying to build up speed to get to the equator.